Okay, you're live. Okay, thank you, sir. Can everyone hear me? I want to make sure everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, just raise your hand. You can hear or not? Good. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Zoom meeting concerning the status of the Metro Green Recycling Center. First, I'd like to thank our communications director, Mr. Adrian Bell, for setting this meeting up. I do appreciate you, Adrian, for that. I call this meeting to address your questions and concerns, where we are with the investigation and the possible options we have in stopping Metro Green. I want to thank State Senator Emmanuel Jones, House Representative Doreen Carter, Commissioners Marita Davis Johnson and Lorraine Cochran Johnson, and our City Council. Councilwoman Jasmine Cobble, who represents District 3, Councilman George Turner, who represents District 4, and Councilwoman Tammy Grimes, who represents District 5, who all have been working tirelessly on stopping this project. This shows we have the support, or you have the support, of the state, county, and city levels. I would also like to thank our Mayor, Jason Larry, for establishing this investigative committee, who I would like to introduce to you now. And I don't see Councilman uh, Jimmy Clanton. He, oh, there he is. I think he's coming on now. So Jimmy Clanton represents District 1, is a member of the committee. Mr. Chris Wheeler, who is the Director of Planning and Zoning, is a member. Mr. Winston Denmark, who is our city attorney with the firm of Fincher and Denmark, and myself. What I'd like to do right now is for Mr. Denmark, just to give you a little, somewhat of a status report on where we are, after which we can address some of your questions. Thank you, thank you Councilman, uh, and thank you, citizens. Uh, well, we're, we're knee deep uh, in the investigation and it's nearing a conclusion. We've been working for the last couple of weeks um, just to try to understand the matter first. I mean, it's truly been an investigation because sometimes an investigation starts and you think you already understand what the issues are and you're going through the motions. Um, but when I was asked uh, to be a part of this committee to do this investigation, I knew nothing about this project. I had never been involved in it. I'd never seen a single document, never talked to a single person. So I came in cold and I knew nothing about it. So given that reality, I thought it was critical um, that I, I, I take it down to the studs, as they say, and, and start from the very, very beginning, um, try to find every document that I thought might be relevant um, and, and, and fully understand the timeline, the history, um, uh, all of the players, uh, everything that happened. Because I heard once people started talking about it, well, this happened and then that happened, and I didn't really know what happened. And so I couldn't go based on what I'd been hearing. I had to get the actual facts, the actual evidence that I could document and present in report form to first the committee, then to the full mayor and council, and then to the citizens. Um, and so we've been doing that, um, trying to put all of those documents together. And we've done that now. I don't think there's any relevant information that's out there that I haven't seen and reviewed and analyzed. Uh, and so now that we've put all of the documents and all of the information and all of the facts together. Well, the next step is, of course, uh, to see what the legal implications are, what legal options present themselves in light of those facts. And so me and my associate, Aliyah Baith, have been working um, uh, diligently on our legal analysis um, that we want to share with the committee this week. Uh, and then uh, to the full mayor and council next week. And so we're very, very close to completing that um, and having the legal outcomes uh, and the legal analysis that, that we think applies uh, to this matter. And um, once we've done that, then it'll be uh, the decision of, of, the, of the council um, in terms of what, if anything, the city does. Thank you. Denmark. Are there any questions or concerns? What are some questions or concerns you might have in reference to what uh, Attorney Denmark just stated? So is everybody, I guess, understanding or in agreement? Yes, ma'am, please un unmute yourself, Miss Lee. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Um, I really didn't get much out of what was just said. We want to know the status of the investigation. What is being done? Is the investigation going in our favor or not? We shouldn't have to wait next week for a city, city council meeting to get an update on the investigation. That was the whole purpose, I thought, of this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, what the uh, attorney just said was rubbish to me. He, he, he said nothing of substance. 
We want to know what's going on. Where did the investigation lead you guys to? Tell us something. This is in my backyard. Please. Well, you know, obviously, I can understand your frustration. And it's also in my backyard because I'm in this district also. So it affects me just as much as it affects everyone in your community too. As uh, the attorney has stated, and I do, do reiterate that, you know, we're getting all the, making sure we have all the paperwork together. We have legal information from the, from the uh, Senator uh, Jones and also from our commissioners that stating that they were not in compliance in reference to them having a permit or being approved for a permit. So we want to make sure that all the legalese and all the legal positions are in place so that when we go forth with our, our case, we have something that can be successful with it. Uh, all of us, as I told you earlier, uh, want this thing to stop. We're not, we're not a part of having this thing. We don't support it. We want it over. So we now the, 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 the jet engine is in the air. Now we got to try to find a way to land it. So that's where we are right now. And what uh, uh, Attorney Denmark, and I'll let him continue to speak for himself, is that we, uh, we have gotten all the legal paperwork together in reference to the documentations for the permitting, uh, who they had to go through, through EPD, all these other things. And those, that's what he's working on now to reveal or to share with us. Uh, uh, hopefully, he said by this time, uh, sometime this week. Uh, uh, yeah, so what, what I would, would say is that uh, an investigation is an investigation. And um, in, in the course of my career, I, I've done investigations more than once. And, um, and, and so I, I, I'm familiar with the process that, I, that I'm engaged in. I understand people's frustration and wanting an answer like tonight, right here, right now, but that, that's not what I'm prepared to do. So I, I apologize if people are frustrated by that. I'm gonna conduct the investigation in the manner that I indicated that I would, which is to come in with no preconceived notions, um, to gather all of the facts, and to apply the law to that, I'm only going to release my findings once that's complete. And as I sit here now, my investigation is not complete. So frustrations notwithstanding, I'm not prepared um, to give the results or the findings or the conclusions of the investigation when the investigation is ongoing and not complete. I, I, don't, I don't think anybody, anybody who's investigating anything but in the middle of the investigation or before the investigation is over, says, okay, well, here are the conclusions of the investigations when the investigation is still ongoing. It makes no sense. If you do that, then you've already prejudged the matter because you don't have to finish the investigation. You can give your conclusions now while the investigation is going on. And then why are you doing an investigation? That's just, if, if we don't want to have an investigation, say, let's not have an investigation. Let's just do something. That's an option. That's fine. Uh, um, I was asked be on a committee to do an investigation. I've been practicing law for 25 years. I've done multiple investigations. Investigations, the findings I've never released if the person is competent until the investigation is complete. The investigation is not complete, so there will be no um, findings or conclusions discussed this evening. Good day, I have a question. Okay. My name is Kamala Gonzalez. I am a resident of Miller Woods Community Subdivision. So um, let me first start out by saying, I understand that everyone on this call is concerned and we all residents of South DeKalb and the city of Stonecrest. However, um, when Ms. Lee spoke about the um, Metro Green Recycling being in her backyard, it is literally in her backyard. When she walks to her backyard, and look or looks out her window in the living room, she's looking at the site. For us that are over here, um, it's, it seems to be more of a eminent distress concern. So if I understand that the um, investigation is still ongoing, but give us some preliminary findings. Where are we as of today? We're not asking for a, a premature conclusion, but rather an update as to where we are right now. On Monday's meeting, Attorney Denmark, Denmark said that he would have it completed by the end of the week. Today is actually Thursday, so there is one more day in this business week to have it completed. So I would assume that as of Thursday evening, he should be very close to wrapping up his investigation based on his own words. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, thank you for that information. Let, let me read you briefly a letter that uh, Senator Jones sent to the director of EPD just a couple of days ago. He said, Mr. Dunn, I am writing again to insist that the Environmental Protection Division revoke the license issued for the building material handling permit for Metro Green Recycling. Per the documents, and those documents have been submitted to uh, Attorney Denmark, I am attaching to this letter, it is clear that DeKalb County had jurisdiction over the waste management plan during this issue. 
based on information from DeKalb County, they never approved of this plan. From this point forward, the only reasonable way to avoid further litigation and overall public embarrassment is for EPD to revoke mm -hmm. the permit wrongly issued to Metro Green Recycling. That's pretty much where we are. That's, that's, that's the direction we're moving in to get that permit revoked as soon as possible because they were not in compliance in reference to them submitting to get that. So that's, that's where we are. We just want to make sure all our T's are crossed, all our I's are dotted, because again, this might have to go to a, to a court. So we want to make sure that we're ready for that and that we've done everything. We've done our due diligence, you know, and all the things that we needed to do to make sure this thing can be stopped. The whole point of the matter is this. The city of Stonecrest, city council, as I said earlier, and the county and the, city, and the state, we don't want this in your area. We don't want this in our area. So it's not, a, it's not an adversarial uh, meeting that we're having. It's not an adversarial relationship. We're all on the same course. We're all moving in the same direction. I understand the, the, uh, the impatience in reference to where we are with this, but we want to make sure that when we do it, we do it right, and we have everything we need in place to be successful for the stopping of this recycling center. Uh, Mr. Wheeler, is there anything you want to share in reference to what's going on with the city or any other things and uh, information you might have? Uh, I mean, not at this point. I mean, uh, Winston pretty much kind of uh, stated it all. I mean, we're currently investigating um, everything. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have much to give unless somebody wants to know the, the process of how the, the planning zoning reviews applications and land service process. Uh, I can explain that in further detail to kind of explain how we got to this point. Uh, but as far as the investigation, I don't have that. I don't, I, don't, I can't, I, there's nothing else that I need to add to it because Winston covered it, uh, most of it all. Um, again, I'm, I'm here to explain from a technical standpoint of how land disturbance and how Metro Green could proceed uh, as, as uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with their development. Um, if anybody has questions about that uh, and so forth and why residents weren't uh, notified and things of that nature and so forth. Yeah, I, I do have a question. Is that Mr. Marcus? Yes. My question is, for a project of this size that had to obtain some kind of land disturbance, land clearing permit, and therefore mean the people applying had to provide some kind of detail as to what they were going to do. How did this project get so far uh, and, and nobody knew about it? I mean, was there a breakdown in the procedure somewhere along the line? What happened? Something obviously happened that is a total breakdown that this project will get so far that they're clearing land and disturbing land and nobody knows what the hell is going on. What kind of recycling plant? What sort of proposal did they, did they, did they present to the, to, the, to the Cap County to get this approved? You know, what were they, what did they provide as backup for their, for their plan to clear the land and disturb the land? You know, nobody knows what's going on. I am curious to know what, how they got this far something is a serious breakdown that they got this far. In, in that, that's my layman's view of the situation. In reference to the city, Mr. Wheeler, can you address that? Sorry, I, I dropped off my internet went out. I'm sorry, I, I missed I missed the part. I'm sorry, what was the, the question? How did the project get so far along without the community not really knowing, not being involved in it? Yes. Not having so, understanding about what was happening in that area. Yes, yeah, so, so when you have a parcel that is already zoned for a permitted use, normally it's, so it would not go in front of the city council, it appeared. It, there's, no, there's no asking for permission to, to develop a property that's already permitted. So in the current zoning, zoning, uh, uh, zoning use table that we have established in the city, a recycling center is permitted in light industrial. The property is zoned light industrial. So therefore, that's a buy right use. So therefore, if you bought the property, Mr. Marcus, or if I bought the property and I decided I had the capital to establish a recycling center, I, all I have to do is get a land disturbance permit, a building permit, and get and have it reviewed by other municipalities, I mean, other local jurisdictions. I can establish that because, again, the zoning already states that I have the right to do so. So therefore, that's why you wouldn't be notified of a private development. The only time you are notified of a development uh, is when they're asking for a change in zoning. So, for example, if that property had been zoned commercial and they said, I want to be I want to change this from commercial to industrial, then we're changing the zoning map. We're going from a different use to a whole nother use. Uh, and that's why you'd be notified. But but when properties are already zoned a certain district, you would not be notified of a private development. Uh, the city cannot notify 
residents of a private development, we, we don't have that right. Because again, this is not a development that we're doing. It's a development that the, the applicant is doing. All they're asking is that, hey, I'm building a house, um, or I'm not building a house, but I'm building something that's permitted. Therefore, I need to get a proper permit. Same thing if you were building your house, you, we wouldn't notify residents as, hey, you're building a house. You say, I mean, that's that in the power of the, of the city. We, we don't, that same thing why we wouldn't notify you of the type of use that you're doing and so forth without you actually doing an open record request. An open record request, and yes, we will give you that information, but the city can't voluntarily give you that information without you actually asking for that information. So that's why you wouldn't be notified of this type of development uh, occurring in your city. I mean, occurring right next to you, because again, the property is owned already industrial and, the, and that use is allowed uh, in the area. I have a question. I'm sorry, were you finished? Oh, yes ma'am, I'm done, yes ma'am. Okay, how can this residential subdivision that's on the same block, the same side of the street as Metro Green, as their building, how can we be zoned the same? We're talking residential and industrial. How did that happen? So ma'am, so you, you guys are not zoned the same. So you're zoned residential by Metro Green and then the property above you is zoned industrial. So what you, uh, I actually, I can, I can share, I can show you the zoning map to show you the, show you what you, where you guys are located. Unfortunately, you got, uh, fortunately the residents who live in Miller Road, uh, Miller Wood subdivision, you are kind of in the industrial area. You are sandwiched in between two light industrial parcels, one to the north of you and one to the south of you. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to why you got, why the property was zoned uh, residential in the industrial area. Uh, that was before me. Uh, but just generally speaking, as a planner, you do not zone residential in the industrial area. I mean, that's just, you, that's just common knowledge is because of the two different types of uses. It did the, the difference in intensity of uses is because again, and when you have industrial area, everybody knows that that's going to create, you know, uh, uh, noise, uh, uh, dust, and so forth. Stuff that's not consistent with a, with a person who wants to live in that area. And, and generally speaking, if, if you have a d industrial zone property, you wouldn't even be able to, to build a house in an industrial zone property. Because again, the nature, the idea of, a, of an industrial area is because you're trying to create stuff that's not uh, conducive for, for to live in that area. That's why you wouldn't have it. Uh, unfortunately, here in the city of Stonecrest, we have residential abutting industrial. Uh, that's that's pretty much what we have. The, the 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 challenge that we have here in the city is trying to mitigate uh, uh, the negative effect that can have on residents uh, in the industrial area. That's that's the that's the issue that that the city council has to, or the city, I should say, not city council, but the city has to try to figure out how to to change that. Is because you clearly you do not want to have industrial right next to residential, uh, because again, you, we have issues like this. Is where somebody who buys a property, and again, no no matter how I, how I personally feel about it, they have the right to 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 whatever use that's allowed in that zoning district, even though it's right next to to a residential subdivision. Uh, again, that because of the conflict and different types of uses, you try to keep that separate from one another. You try to have a, a transitional, uh, uh, have a, a, a zoning classification inside between them to kind of buffer that, such as as commercial or office institutional, is because you know the difference because you know the difference in uses is going to come into conflict is because somebody who wants to have an industrial use where you have uh, uh, have uh, dust and noise and then just keeps up type of a, of a, a, a ruckus that most people who live in a residential area do not want to be a part of uh, so again that that is the um, that 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 is the that is the the, the the issue that at hand is trying to address that uh, because again when the city was formed and we adopted the zoning map from DeKalb County all this was already zoned. Uh, we just adopted it because again, it makes it easier transition instead of trying to create a whole new zoning map is to basically to create this, to adopt what the Cab County had already in place. And then we could itself get, try to establish and try to change it over time. Uh, but but as, as, as currently as we're, we're situated, the zoning that we have, none of that has changed. That has always been like that since the formation of the city. And it's been like that for, for a number of years.
And that's what we're gonna have to do. Look at that zoning map and do some rezoning because obviously we don't ever want this to happen again. So yeah. that's something that the council will be working on and be looking into to look at so how we can rezone that and make sure that we're not having residential and light industrial or heavy industrial back to back to the point where it's affecting the quality of life for that community and the property value for that area. So we are looking to make those changes in the zonings. So those are some things we will be doing. But as of now, what we need to concentrate on what we need to do now is to try to stop this, this green from um, being built. And that's why, you know, the, the meeting, that's why the investigation, that's why we're gathering in all this other information from other entities to make sure that we are in place to make it happen. If what, from what I can see, the representative information I have, they were in violation in reference to receiving a permit for the solid waste management plan because it was, we were under, we were under an IGA and that had to come through the Cab County, which they did not give them a permit for that. So again, these are the things that we're working on to make sure that we're there, some understanding on what we need to do to uh, stop this thing from happening. Yes, Mr. Is it Mulberry? Uh, this is Dr. Jindo. I'm asking, uh, what is the purpose of this meeting? If they have already started work on it and we can hear them every morning. And also you are talking of rezoning. If they already completed, how would you rezone it? Well, we're and not how would you destroy what they have already built? Well, what we're trying to do is not necessarily rezone that. What we're trying to do is stop that for right now. What this meeting is about, as I said earlier on, is this is an information gathering meeting. It's just to share where you, we are and what direction we want to move in to hear your questions, concerns, because I get calls and emails every day in reference to this. And I want to make sure that we have all your questions and concerns answered. But also, we had talked about sharing a, an investigative report, which we're going to have for you in reference to the direction we're going to be moving in on how to approach this thing. So that, that's the purpose of the meeting is, you know, to see what kind of options we might have in reference to where we are now. Like I said earlier, as, as, you know, as an example, the plane is in the air, it's not in the hangar anymore. So we got to try to find a way to get the plane down. And that's, that, that's where we are right now, trying to land this plane and stop it from going any further than it already has. Okay. Thank you. You have about three hands that are raised, uh, Campbell, Gonzalez, Piper, and Alexis Morris. Okay. I don't uh, think as a whole stack can see it, I don't think you can, but just to give you those uh, ideas. Those Alexis, people. Piper, or who else? If you guys just want to say something, go on. Alexis, can you hear me? Hi, good, hi, good afternoon. This is Alexis Morris. I'm a resident of Middle Woods um, subdivision. So when I listen to the city attorney speak with regards to trying to mitigate certain instances um, because it was already resolved, it sounds to me that that's, uh, again, a bunch of excuses. Because if you already know that we have a residential area in the midst of a, an industrial area, you already know that you inherited a situation where you're gonna have conflicts of interest. So with that being said, from what I understand from the county zoning, in 2018, they did advise um, Metro Green that they were not in compliance with the waste management contract. And with that being said, um, I think that the city could have definitely made decisions um, with consideration of the fact that you inherited a mixed use area, residential and industrial, to not lift the uh, stop work order. So every day we hear tractors and every day we see that there is being construction, you're creating a bigger problem that even in settlement will have to uh, pay out. So my issue is still the fact that the mayor decided to lift that order and allow them to continue to build, which would cost the city more money, even if we end up litigating the issue. And you knew already you inherited a, a residential quasi industrial unit that would consider that you would have to consider those residents as well. And that wasn't done. It was not done. The mayor did not consider the residents that were in the middle of the industrial park and you proceeded with the building. You proceeded with lifting the order. So I need to know what was the mindset at the time when the mayor decided to proceed with allowing the building to go forward, knowing he had an issue with residential issues. Attorney? County Attorney, Chris, City Attorney, Attorney, I'm waiting for you. 
Um, I, I, I mean, I can't speak to the mindset of the mayor. Well, uh, you spoke to the mindset of the the city inheriting a problem. So because the city inherited the problem and they were aware that they had the problem, I need to know why the city or the mayor proceeded with allowing it's Metro because, Green to proceed. Because, ma'am, it's because it's individual property rights. I can't, if something is already zoned, something is, is already something zoned that, that permits a use. Legally, but I can't tell was you. I, it, was zoned, it was zoned industrial. Yes, ma'am. But they still ask permission. No, no, but yes, why did yes, he grant, why ask, was permission they granted? Permission. Yes, yes they, can, they, can ask, they can ask permission by the zoning, a zoning certification letter. Right. The zoning certification letter is to confirm that the zoning allows for that type of use. But he supported that's what, that's, that's what, as well. It was yeah. supported as well. It was well, not only allowed, it was supported. Well, I, I can't speak to the mayor's letter of being supportive. Now, I didn't, I didn't write his letter. I can't speak. All that I can speak to is the reason why it was able to proceed is because it's permitted. Legally, I cannot, staff cannot stop a person from operating a use that is permitted. No matter how the house, a uh, personal that I may feel about anything, legally, if it says that I can, if it legally is, it says that you can do a use at that location, then staff legally is obligated to get, grant them the permit if they meet all the requirements. That's that's just that's my, just plain. But, but you, there's, there's nothing else point. I can do about that. No, my point is, you knew that there was a residential neighborhood adjacent, and that's how you inherited it. So when they ask you about it prior to acquiring the the property, again, I feel, and the residents feel again, that it should again, have been advocated again, not again, to acquire because you don't support it. Again, that. again, ma'am, ma'am, again, ma'am, again. How again? I understand what you're saying. But legally, even though there's a residential neighborhood to the north of the property, legally, I cannot tell them that they cannot do the use. It's because the, the property is already zoned light industrial, and that use is already allowed. Again, that went out the window years ago when, when that property was already zoned. The issue of allowing residential to be next to an industrial, that, that was already allowed. That, that horse left the barn already. From a staff standpoint, I cannot, even though I see that there's a residential no, uh, location, I mean, residential neighborhood located north of this subject property, I can I can legally say, hey, you cannot do this. It's because that property is already zoned industrial. I cannot I cannot do that. No matter how much I would like to, as much as Councilman Turner would like to, legally the city cannot deny them a permit is because the property is already zoned that way. That's that's the issue. The issue is it was already zoned and legally, legally it, they could proceed with that use. That that is the, that is the crux of everything. Is because again, legally it was already zoned and the use was already allowed. Staff could not tell them no, you cannot do that. Even though we may believe that is a wrong I, wrong thing to do, we are still obligated to give it that to give that to them. Because again, if we deny them the permit, all they're going to do is sue the city. And then the city is going to have to have a come up a legal reason why we denied them. And the reason why is even though we may say, hey, here's a residential neighborhood to that location, if everything they check every box in the zoning ordinance, we still have to give it to them. I, I that's that's just that's that's unfortunate. That is well, that's the way we're, well, we're, well, we're, well leg legally, legally speaking, the city could have decided to rezone that area in lieu of. Giving it to them because it's I, 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 I would say before, so what they could have done, but they could have done legally I, I is cannot, say, I cannot, I is cannot legally. Chris, 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 allow, yeah, allow Miss Morris, Chris, please allow Miss Morris to speak. Go on and speak. Sorry, right. Okay, what they could have done was decide to rezone the light commercial and allow it to be not be used for that purpose if they had the resident's interest at heart. So my point still remains, you inherited a, a, a situation at, from the county. I get that. However, now that you're a city, you have that authority to rezone that area. So when they ask you, just like if it were not zoned like commercial, they would have asked permission to zone it like commercial. You could have done the reverse. And I know that the city of Miami Gardens did it. I know other cities that have done it so that they can move forward in the interest of their citizens. So I'm just saying that the city still could have decided prior to the purchase in 2018 to hold a public hearing, rezone it, and make sure that it does not imp imp impede the residents. Uh, I, you could have done that. 
Wizard, can you speak to rezoning, legally rezoning stuff with, with the property, uh, property um, no, no, information no. and so forth? Because I, I can't speak to that. So. Yeah, Ms. Barnes is actually correct. I mean, she's correct. Exactly. Uh, the, 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 the city could have, it could have been a city initiated rezoning prior to Metro Green acquiring the property. Because sometimes Absolutely. once we became a city, I'm not, I, I'm not casting aspersion at anybody. I'm just saying what it is. And what it is, is once we became a city, we inherited a situation from DeKalb County where you have property zoned for industrial use adjacent to property that was zoned for commercial use. This was a problem waiting to happen. It was only a matter mm -hmm. of time. So you could have avoided the problem by saying, well, we inherited this mess from DeKalb County, but we're going to have a city initiated rezoning because we see a potential problem here. We have this commercial, which is residential property uh, zone, I mean, uh, adjacent to this uh, industrial property. So let's get ahead of the game. City initiated rezoning and rezone that property to uh, to residential or to something else. But, but that didn't happen. Now, this was before my time. This was before your time, Chris, um, uh, because both of us came in late in the game. I came to this problem in, in 2020. And so uh, Stoke became a, a city in 2017. So, so once we became a city, we could have looked at this particular situation and other situations citywide and say, well, where are the potential problems? Industrial, directly adjacent to residential, let's address this, let's rezone these properties before we have a situation develop like this. That didn't happen for whatever reason. The city had a lot of things going on when the city first became a city. We're still a new city. So that did not happen. And so we are where we are. But Ms. Morris is actually correct. We could have, before we even got to this point, the city could have initiated its own rezone, <laughs> rezone the property to um, residential or to something else. Well, thank you. Because well, again, like I said again, I, we are, we're, we're, we're looking at these at this point in time, as I, but previously, like I said again, I, I couldn't explain why. Only that I'm telling you is from a from from a staff standpoint of why the, it was able to move forward. Again, we are looking at that now is because we see that there's there's a lot of properties that are located in the industrial area that are but industrial area. Again, like I said, I can't speak to why we didn't proceed with this earlier. But like I said, again, staff is looking at it now to address that because again, it is is because this one issue. Uh -huh. There are other issues that could be that yeah, are concerning. Can I speak? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Senator Jones, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, uh, okay. Council Turner. Would you, would you like to say something? I do. Um, I, I've been. First of all, let me apologize. I've been driving uh, back from being out of town, and I just got to a place where I can get on the Zoom call. And I heard part of what Chris said about the city's responsibility. I want to make it crystal clear from the state's perspective, from the state EPD they would not have approved this permit had Stonecrest simply said, this project did not meet their waste management plan. There is no way this organization could have forced this project, regardless of what that property is zoned, without the support of Stonecrest. And let me also add, I heard some comments about property could have been rezoned. We could have, within four months, Stockbridge, the, the uh, ballot initiative passed in 2017. Essentially, the city went in operation at the beginning of 2018. Within four or five months of this city being in operation, your mayor was sending letters to EPD supporting this project. That's what started this project when the mayor gave his blessings to this project without any consideration as to whether or not this project uh, mm -hmm. even comply with the waste management plan. We now know, based on the research in DeKalb County and our research, that this project does not comply with anybody's waste management plan. Of course, we know Stonecrest does not have a waste management plan. They do not recycle solid waste. To this day, DeKalb County provides the solid waste management program for the city of Stonecrest as per the IGA, which wasn't signed until after this project was approved by the state EPD. So during the time that this project was under the review, this project was fully under the purview of the Cap County in regards to the solid waste management plan. They cannot get around that. As hard as they're trying, they cannot get around it. 
There is a letter sent to the state EPD back in, I forgot, latter part of 2018 from uh, Mike, who was then the city manager, essentially saying that the county was under the Cab County's solid waste management plan. But in, again, he said that this project complied even though it didn't. And that single letter alone from Mike, the then city manager, was the impetus that the state EPD needed. And they are basing their opinion on this letter they received from the then city manager, uh, Mike, back in the latter part of 2018, I think around August, October, August, September 2018. So this whole issue surrounding, and we now know that that letter uh, was not correct. So the issue that I've forced EPD to reconsider twice. First time they turned me down and said, well, we took our direction from the city of Stonecrest. The Cab County sent them a letter about a week ago saying, no, 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 no. That project, we did not sign an IGA with Stonecrest until November 2018. This project was issued, an uh, EPD issued their permit in October of 2018. So clearly DeKalb County has put a stake in the ground that said if they recycle any solid waste, they're in violation. So right now, uh, and that letter has already been forwarded to the state EPD, I followed up with a letter of my own requesting that EPD reconsider their opinion that they sent to me a couple of weeks ago and avoid any unnecessary legal challenges to this, because there will be some, by the way, and further public embarrassment by revoking this permit. That's where we stand from a state perspective. And I did read your letter earlier, uh, uh, Senator Jones, that you had sent. So uh, that just verifies what you just shared with us. So Thank you, Councilman Turner. This is Jasmine Cobble. Let me know. If there's some other folks ahead of me and I'll wait, but I would like to make a comment um, when we yeah, get a chance. Yeah, because I'm waiting as well. This All right, uh, Councilwoman Cobble and then State Representative uh, Carter. I think I was in front of her, but- oh, Excuse me then, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, you can go. So, so first I want to say thank you for hosting the meeting. You're welcome. Uh, thank you all for joining the meeting. And uh, I'm State Representative Doreen Carter. You guys live in my house district. Um, when I jumped on, you guys were having a conversation about the zoning. And one of the things I want us to be real, real clear is that the zoning is not the issue. And we need to stop talking about the zoning. So my question is to Attorney Denmark. As the Senator has shared, and, and uh, we got this information uh, a, a couple months ago, and we have definitely been uh, talking with the community, the city, and the state, and even the folks from Metro Green from our first uh, meeting and EPD acknowledged in a meeting that we hosted uh, a couple months ago. Uh, when will the mayor, or will you advise the mayor to write a letter to EPD to confirm that he did not approve the letter that was sent from the prior city manager. That letter, as uh, the Senator just said to you all, and, and you know this, is the letter that has been used, that was used to approve, even the, even the fact that EPD knew that this project was not in compliance with DeKalb County, and then we cannot leave out the fact that the mayor sent a follow-up letter saying that uh, the zoning was approved and that uh, referencing, uh, he made a reference in his letter that referenced back to Metro Green's letter uh, that everything was in order. So I know you guys are concerned about uh, being sued and I think you guys should take a different posture because Metro Green knew it was not in compliance before they bought the property, even though they bought the property after Stonecrest sent a letter. So, so my question again, 
I need for you guys to change your posture. And if the mayor did not in fact agree that this property was not in compliance, and he did not in fact authorize that letter, then we need an immediate retraction because the people that live in this area should not be at the butt of this situation because somebody did something that they shouldn't have. That was a question, wasn't it? Uh, that is a question to the attorney because you guys have been doing the investigation you know that the city doesn't do uh, solid waste. You notice this project is not in compliance. This is not about the zoning. This is about the business that's going to be conducted on that property that DeKalb County clearly stated that this property is not in compliance. So what the people in Stonecrest and I as their state representative and the Senator are asking, what is Stonecrest going to do to rectify this situation? It could start with the mayor sending a letter that he did not authorize the initial one. And I agree with those statements. Thank you, uh, Representative. Yes, sir. What, what I would say to that is the, the issue about the zoning came up in response to a question. Uh, Representative Carter, um, you may not have been on the call when, when that question came up and I was simply uh, responding to a, a question that specifically asked about the zoning. I would agree with you that the zoning is not the issue. Um, um, I don't think it ever has been the issue. Um, the investigation, as I said earlier, um, we're, we're concluding that investigation uh, this week and I'm going to share the results with first the committee and then with the full mayor and council. What they direct me to do um, at that point um, is, what, is precisely what I'll do. Um, uh, but what I don't wanna do is to um, share the results of my conclusions here on this call uh, without the benefit of having had a communication with my client about the investigation. I don't, I don't think that's the appropriate thing to do. So I'm going to, yeah, the investigation is near complete and I, um, but I, you know, I always reserve judgment until I'm, I'm finished with my investigation, which I am not. I'm still looking at some things, but I'll, I'll be finished this week. And I'll give the uh, city of Stonecrest the, uh, the absolute best legal advice I can give them with a goal towards um, the interests of the citizens and the interests of the city. Thank you for that. I'll come back to the two council members. If there's another council member on this call, I don't see you. So the people I am here. I'm Jimmy Clanton. I am hey, on the call. Hey, councilman. I can see you now. You know, you can't see everybody. So, so since there are three councilmen on here, you guys don't say anything. Sure. I don't want them to say we have an illegal meeting. But I am asking you as a state representative and the senator has already concurred that we are asking you to uh, go back to your mayor, their mayor, our mayor, and say, if you did not authorize this letter that is being used by EPD, because that is the letter that's holding, holding the people hostage, then that there needs to be some communication to the city, to the, to the state, that he did not in fact authorize that letter. Yes, I know you guys have some legal things going on, but I have serious issues with the fact that Metro Green is threatening to, to sue the city when Metro Green knew that they were not in compliance before they received this permit. And as, as a state uh, representative and a state senator, I know you guys both know that the city's position will be to do what's legally right and what's morally right, given the the situation, the landscape as it is right this second. So certainly whatever it is that would move this along in favor of our citizens is what we're gonna do. So, you know, be that a letter or be that whatever it is, uh, that's the whole point. And that's the reason why we have an investigative committee now is not just to investigate what went wrong, but also to investigate what it is that we can do to make this right. And uh, Councilman Turner, has done a great job in leading this committee as well as our uh, city attorney and the help of Chris Willer. So I think we got the right people on the team and with you guys help and the information that you have shared and supplied with us as well, this all has uh, contributed to, you know, what I think is gonna be a, a, a beneficial end for the citizens one way or the other. So yeah, there are some hard uh, uh, issues coming up, uh, hard questions that we're gonna have to answer as far as what we're gonna do next. But that is why we have a investigative committee and that is why we already know what the public, we, I mean, it, it's, it's, it'll be stupid for us to, 
to sit here and say, we wonder what the public think about this. We know what the public think, and we know that, you know, pretty much everybody in and around Stonecrest, no one agrees with what is happening. Why it happened? There's a lot of reasons why it happened. You know, there's a lot of things you can say why it happened, uh, you know, but whatever, regardless of that, you know, right now we got to fix this one way or the other. And so I, I just think after this investigative committee uh, uh, produces its findings, then we as a community can decide how to move forward one way or the other. But thank you guys for your input though, really. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Councilman Turner. Yes. I'm gonna make this statement again. If the mayor did not authorize this letter, I got you. Our expectation is for him to fix it. Yes, you guys are in a pickle. I got you. But I think you have to take a different posture because there is a uh, liability on Metro Green's part in that they have very clear notification from the county that this project was not in compliance with the county solid waste plan. Represent, I'm not going to uh, dance around this with y'all. I'm sorry, what you said? I'm not going to dance around this. Oh, no, no, no. This is not a dance. I totally agree with you. And I appreciate you bringing it up. And it will be addressed. Thank you. Can, I, Councilman I know Turner, that I this might... is Councilwoman Cobble. Yes, I, Can I say a, 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 just a thing? Because my phone is getting ready to die. I got 5%. And you won't have to worry about me anymore. Um, I think, and I'm not going to tarry on the point too long, because I think Representative Carter and Senator Jones have said it well and more than one time. Um, but um, we really need to, and, and Attorney Denmark, if you've already said this, I'm sorry, you'll probably have to say it a few more times, but the first issue that we think is extremely important to resolve is the fact that Stonecrest made a statement on behalf of another jurisdiction that was not true. And what EPD did with that information, rather it be right or wrong, which I think we all can understand that what they did was not correct. They didn't do their due diligence to find out if we could even speak on behalf of another, another jurisdiction. So I think there's many challenges in what they did with that information. But the fact that we sent that information that was incorrect on behalf of a jurisdiction that provided a service that we did not provide, and even at that time, our IGA wasn't even in place. So under no circumstances was it confused that we provided solid waste. The Cab County still had jurisdiction. They had it then, they have it now under an IGA, but even before the IGA, it was, it was in their hands. So the fact that we made a statement in an official letter um, about a service we don't provide, um, and then falsified that information about the service we didn't provide is a Stonecrest problem. It's not a county problem. It's not an EPD problem. That's a Stonecrest issue. And we, we need to really understand how to rectify that issue because that's where this kind of starts. Whether the property was zoned for that use or not is here nor there when we begin to falsify information on behalf of another jurisdiction on a service we didn't provide in the first place and still don't. And so we can go and, and Senator Jones and, and, and Commissioner Johnson, Davis Johnson and Representative Carter are doing all they can to get EPD to understand that even with that letter, they should have done a little bit more. They should have understood that another jurisdiction can't speak on behalf of another. Another jurisdiction can't speak on behalf of another without you checking information. And, and so now that all of that is there, they're doing a fantastic job digging into EPD. But I think it's our responsibility to dig into us. How did we, how did that happen? Why did it happen? And how do you fix that? Because the simple fact of the matter is today in 2019 and going forward, the site is not compliant with the solid waste plan. It's not complying with the cab and Stonecrest doesn't have one. So as it sits today, and, and Chris, maybe this is a little bit for you too. We have a site being built that is not compliant today with any solid waste plan. I don't understand how that's not grounds for a stop order to be in place until they can prove that they are consistent with a solid waste plan. As we sit here today, we are allowing them to develop a facility that is not compliant with any solid waste plan. I just don't get how that's not grounds for a stop order. 
uh, yeah, Councilman Calvin, I can, what Winston can explain to you about the, the solid, why we have, we can issue a solid waste, uh, a stop work order for, for that. Uh, as, but as far as uh, issuing of the letter and, and so forth, um, I, I feel comfortable enough to speak on behalf of Michael, Mr. Harris. And I think I would know him well enough that Mr. Harris wouldn't issue a letter uh, knowingly, falsely, or or whatsoever about uh, the, the city of Stonecrest not it, not meeting the comp the solid waste management plan without some knowledge from somebody. I I, I know him too well enough to know that uh, to know that somebody told him and he felt comfortable enough to write that letter. Uh, he wouldn't knowingly write that letter knowing that he was incorrect. Somebody told him. Somebody told him that. Um, secondly of all, as well. Uh, the city of Stonecrest uh, at, at no point in time were we notified that DeKalb County had said that the, uh, the Metro Green was not in compliance with the solid waste management plan. We weren't notified, we didn't get an email. The email chain that you guys have, have around, there's nobody from the city of Stonecrest on that email chain stating otherwise that, hey, this Metro Green does not meet the solid waste management plan. If they had been notified, I can guarantee you that we would have sent an email to Metro Green itself. We would have been to, or we wanted to present it to upper management that says, hey, this is this is an issue. And we would never issue a solid waste management, I mean, issue a land disturbance permit for that. Uh, for well, the, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Cause you, cause your dates don't line up on that, on that conversation because there was prior, before Michael's letter went out, um, DeKalb County had already told Metro Green they weren't complying. And then that's after Michael's that, letter came that out. That is correct. But again, but, again, but we even told still, Metro Green it, that we, no one from no one from staff, I didn't receive an email. I didn't, I, I don't understood. know. Understood. Nicole, but Dope, we know now. I mean, the military, Un understood. The military director got an email. I, I'm not aware of that, but currently I didn't get an email from anybody saying that, hey, this didn't meet the, the solid waste management plan. Uh, I, I, I wasn't. But I was, we know, I can't we do know that. now. But and we, we do know now. So yes, so maybe and, we didn't know then, but we know now. So I guess yeah. my question still remains that we know that they're not compliant. We well, knew well, it and, the day we had that, that special call meeting. And so Winston why is it that, that and maybe you know. this is for Winston, yeah. yeah why yeah, is it that as we know it, we still are allowing them to operate and we know they're not complying with a solid waste plan? That That's for the mayor and council to decide. I mean, I, I mean, that's for the mayor and council to well, decide. Well, we already made that decision. Yeah, and we did. The stop but, order but, was taken away without without any other consideration. And and the stop order is issued not by the council. The stop order is not is not revoked by the council. I, I so you can't legally, say that it's a council responsibility, but then it's not issued or revoked by us. I, I thought it's legally we there was no basis for us to uh, to issue the stop work order because again the issue is again is EPD issuing the solid waste management permit and our issue of the land disturbance permit is based off that permit. Uh, if they had an issue right. with that, but I understood. I, but legally, they're not what? compliant with a solid waste plan. So I, I, how I agree. Not being I agree compliant with, with a solid that. waste plan, I, not a legal grounds for a stop order. I mean, and, right. I mean, unless somebody, I mean, I misunderstood from the last time, uh, I mean, from what we were talking about previously. I, uh, can I just interject for a moment? This is Senator Jones. I read the letter that Micah Harris sent to State EPD. The first paragraph of his letter, Mike, and I know Mike, I represent Henry County. He's our tax commission down in Henry County. I knew him while he was working at Stonecrest. I knew him when he was the city manager at Stockbridge. That's how far back I go. Yes, I've had a conversation with him and mysteriously he's lost his memory but in that letter the first paragraph he clearly states and acknowledges that Stonecrest is under the solid waste management plan from DeKalb County that last paragraph that he mentions in the letter he just pulled that out of the air somewhere saying that it was in compliance so your statement is that Stonecrest wasn't copied on any of the email chains is immaterial your city manager, your city council, your mayor is already acknowledged we're working on an IGA with the Cab County for solid waste. You knew the particulars of that IGA being worked out because you signed it a month after the permit was issued. So don't now play dumb and pretend as if we weren't copied on any of those emails and we didn't know that the Cab County had not agreed to this solid waste management plan. That just does not make any sense. And I'm telling you, in anybody's courtroom, You'll get thrown out. I, I'm, uh, Senator Jones, you, you may be correct, sir. I, like I said again, I'm stating from personally, from my personally, from my email. 
again, again, no one emailed myself. Again, again, apparently there's supposed to be, according to the IGA, the, the public works director is supposed to be the point of contact for the city of Stonecrest when it comes to solid waste management in, in, in the city. Again, so, I, Mr. I, I didn't receive so we do agree that they're Mr. not in place. And with that in place, then, then we can put that stop order, work, stop work order back on, on the table. Am I correct? If, if, yeah, uh, absolutely. And Rob, I, I got to jump off because my phone's dying. But I'd like for Winston to answer that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If, if we can get Denmark to answer that, that would be great. If, if, if not have being compliant with a solid waste happen. plan is not legal grounds, I don't know make, what is. We can have a special call meeting to make that happen to put a stop work on it. If, if we understand they're not in compliance and if it's our responsibility to do so as a council, then we should do that. But the responsibility, um, 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 uh, Councilman Turning, and, and hello everybody, this is Councilwoman Grimes. And one thing I wanna do, I always want my record to be on the side of right. And so I think citizens, thank you so much. I know Ms. Piper, I think you're the first one that I, I kind of attached to. Thank you all for kicking up dust. Sometimes it takes more than just the council to have things brought to our attention when they don't come to us. But I tell you, this is good trouble. This is really, really good trouble. And I promise you, you, you have the commitment from the Stonecrest City Council yes. that we're gonna get to the bottom of this. And y'all, it's gonna be stopped, I promise you. I, I, I promise you this is gonna be stopped. If it's anything within our power that we can do to make it be stopped, it, we're gonna raise enough noise to make it be stopped. Seriously, don't think that because we're quiet in certain instances that we're not working. Please understand that ain't, that ain't it. That is not it. Representative Carter, thank you. Senator Jones, thank you. Constituents, thank you. But the mayor is the one who ordered the stop work order and the mayor so eloquently said he didn't need us to stop, to, to, to remove or to lift it. So we have to go back to the mayor to say, hey, if there are grounds that we can put this work stop work order back on, that's what we have to do. But guys, we have legal counsel who tells us what we, who advises us with good, strong counsel, according to him, as to what we should do. So please know, we're not just in there by ourselves. We're taking advice from our Stonecrest city attorney. So I promise you, give us just a little more time and I promise you, we're gonna have a good time watching them get all their stuff and go. Uh, Councilwoman McGrath, I, I, I have to be honest with you, I am, concerned with what I'm hearing from the city right now, because at the same time, while everybody's blame shifting, this this work is still going on and the people are still suffering. And at what point do you all protect the people and not profit? What point do you all protect the people and not this industry? If it's been told that they've, they've illegally done anything, that should give you a grounds for an immediate work stoppage there should be a, a special meeting call right away to reassess the fact that they're there in the first place. Because again, when you look at what is going there, then you're, you're, seeing, uh, you're seeing the effects of toxins for these people right away, even with the building. And, and at some point, you all have to really look at how do we protect these people? That's priority for us, Mr. Malcolm. I promise you. I, I can't. I promise you. I can't tell by the way that this conversation is going. By the way that this conversation is going, the first priority is forgive me. I know I'm a reverend, but it's to protect your own ass. And at some point, at some point, you all have got to understand that it's protecting the people that should come first because that's what you were elected to do. Mr. Malcolm, that's why we're here. That's why we have this meeting. This meeting is not to cover our butts or whatever. This meeting is to inform you and to get information, to share with you the direction we're going in. We're finding out that they're not in compliance. We're moving forth to get a stop work order back in place as soon as possible. So we are moving in that direction. But again, we wanted to come in here and share with you, not try to hide anything, but be very transparent and open. See what your concerns are, because we know that government does two things. It protects and it provides. And I know that's our calling, so that's what we are trying to do. It has nothing to do with financial renew, in, you know, numeration in reference to uh, what the money is, the situation, or whatever. So we are moving in that direction. Well, just know for the record, council ain't got no money. And we are working hard to make sure it comes to a stop, Mr. Malcolm. And hopefully your opinion will change when that stop work order is put back on and Metro Green is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm.
I'll, I'll be more than happy to uh, do so when, when that does happen and state it publicly. Well, once again- Well, uh, one have, of the issues that I have- We have no- One of the issues that I have is that um, I just bought a property um, over here. It's like right there, right behind me. Um, I didn't spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars to have a concrete um, disposal in my backyard, and that makes absolutely no absolutely no sense. Since I bought a house for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, now I'm going to have a garbage heap in my backyard. For me having a garbage heap in my backyard, that's going to lower my property value, and I just spent money on this thing, so. Uh, I don't plan on having a $250,000 paperweight. Um, you know, we could talk about the problem all day long, but it's the solution that actually is, is the, is, is what needs to be done. And that's um, this meeting, sir, for the solution, not the problem, not the zoning issues, because we're going to correct those things. But the whole point of the matter is understand, I tried to, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but the whole point of the matter is that we are working with you and for you. We're not working against you. This is not an adversarial relationship. We want the same things that right. you Right, and, and, I, and I, I, fully I fully understand that. But at the same time, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Malcolm was saying, uh, they're um, continuing building at post haste. They're trying to get that get their building up and uh, the land is already developed. Uh, I rode by by there just today, and now they're laying um, the rock in order to pay the con in order to put the concrete down on top of that. So they are moving uh, um, immediately. What I want to see is someone here moving immediately, and that is it, it's not. It, I, I work. I work in the legal field. It is not too hard in order for an attorney to file a stop work order or, so, or some type of injunction to put them on on pause because they're moving ahead. Uh, by them moving ahead, we're still sitting here. Yes, we are talking about a solution and we're talking about the problem, but we need the action to be play, put in place. Uh, the action, we need to get some type of uh, legal recourse to halt them from move, moving ahead of where we are. All right, so thank you. You're absolutely right. So what... Um, what is going to be the next step? Is the next question. What What are those options that you all are having in place, and that we as residents we don't know what they are? Well, one of the options that I think just just discussed that we might will call a, a special call meeting to see what we need to do about putting an immediate stop work order on this situation so they can stop, and then we'll go from there because obviously we're understanding that they're not in compliance in reference to what they're doing, and because of that we have legal grounds to do so. Then we need to get an emergency injunction to stop work. Uh, let, let the company know that, hey, these people are serious about, you know, you coming in here. Um, you know, we need to be uh, speaking with some legal counsel in order to say, all right, what, how long will it take in order for us to get an injunction to, to place, uh, uh, to place a stop work because they are moving ahead. I mean, it, it's, it's bothering me that when I ride past there that I saw the rock that they're laying. Okay, the next step, I, I know, what I know how the building goes. The next step is to pour the concrete. Uh, then for pouring the concrete, then they're gonna start pouring the uh, the road, uh, the parking lot. Just um, to let you know, concrete has already been poured. And, and Councilman Turner, if I may inject as well, uh, to answer, uh, to par partially address your question, sir, is that we, that's, that's the point of the committee, was to really investigate what it is we can do next, what can we do within our legal bounds, uh, where can we go uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in a way that will resolve the issue. I mean, again, I'll say it again, we all have concerns, we all have arguments, we all can point fingers and all of that. But at the end of the day, something needs to be done about this. And that's the that's the whole reason, from my okay. understanding, that's the whole reason why we have- who, 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 is, who is the legal counsel? Uh, who uh, is the, the legal counsel, counsel is, he's on the phone call with us. His name is Winston Denmark. He's part of the investigation committee. So, uh, so you know- Okay, we Winston, all have, Winston, what can we do to file, what can we do to get a, uh, a stop work order moving? 
a stop work order that's issued by the um, the the city is issued, but they could I mean they could issue a stop work order uh, tomorrow if they wanted to. Okay, what do we what do we need to do in order to get it done? As far as drawing up a draft and saying uh, we present uh, we the uh, citizens of uh, Stonecrest uh, uh, present this to the court to say that we would like a stop work order immediately uh, on this project. I'm sorry. The, a stop work order would not be would not go to the court. The stop work order would go directly to Metro Green, and the city would be doing that administratively. If you're talking about an injunction that in, to be filed uh, with the superior court, then we would obviously have to go to court uh, to do that. And which one would, is faster? Um, I mean, the stop work order. I mean, it could could happen at at, at any point. Okay. Well, what what if it could be stopped at any point? Let's go ahead and get it done. I mean that that's the city that's 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 the call. I mean, it's not my call. I, I don't I don't I don't make that decision. That that's that the city makes that decision. So, no, we, we're, we're not actually we're, we're not asking for you to make the decision. What I'm, what I'm, we're, we're not asking you to make the decision. We're just asking you to go to the city the city and then present whatever documents that need to be done. Mr. Hanna, hang on one second. I just want to be clear, and I want to be clear asking this question, Attorney Denmark. The stop work order can be reissued as of today. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, the city could could do a stop work order um, whenever it so chose, um, and and that 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 I mean, legally, technically, that that's fine. Understand, of course, that um, if we want Metro Green stop, then that that's fine. The the issue is we could issue the stop work order. We can go to court and get an injunction. Um, I've been asked to be a part of an investigative team to look at it because our interest is to make sure that we understand all of the facts. Because I didn't know anything about this when we when it was first presented to me a couple of weeks ago. Never heard of Metro Green. Didn't know what they were doing, um, and so I didn't understand the facts. I didn't understand the, the law that applied. Uh, so. I've taken this time to educate myself, so now I do understand things, and I'm giving the city um, my legal opinion uh, as it relates to to all of these issues. And I think that's important because at the end of the day, when we if we go to court, we go to court to win. We don't go to court on emotion and what we feel. We go with uh, the technical structures of the law, and I need to satisfy myself because. I'm going to be the one standing in court in front of that superior court judge and a lawyer on the other side. I'm going to have to defend what we did. So I need to be on point, technically and legally correct. And I've been doing this for 25 years. I don't go into court half cock. I don't go in court and lose. And so, but I'm going to do this. Well, right, right I'm, now, I'm right, going, now, right, right now, we're not actually. Right now, we're not actually to go into court. Right now, we're actually to. You just stated that there are two different situations. Well, yeah, I, I don't do stop work orders. That, that, that's, that's an administrative matter that the city can do at any point. I would become involved if- Can you bring, can you bring it to the city and go it? Uh, let me ask you a question. And, and you know, this is no offense. Uh, are you the attorney for the city? Yeah, I'm the city attorney for the city of Stonecrest. Yes, sir. Okay. If you're the, the, you're the attorney for the city of Stonecrest, then uh, you should be able to just go ahead and say, hey, hit, hit city, listen. Uh, these people have a problem. They want to stop work order. Let's put the, you know, they wanted me to present it. I, well, all I want you to do is just go ahead and present it. Uh, um, they're moving forward. What we need to do is have you moving forward. I understand that you need to do your research, but you have you have time in order to do your research with when you have to stop work order because they're moving ahead, but we are not. What I need for you to do or what we need for you to do is move forward. Um, I understand you have research. You can get your research done once the stop work order is in place. I, I don't. I don't issue stop work orders. I, I mean, the, the, the stop work order. If if the mayor and council wanted to stop work order today, they they could they could do that. They don't need me for that. I mean, I, I don't understand why you're, you're asking me to go to the city and say something Sir, about a stop work order. Whoever is on here who represents the city outside of you. Who can put that stop order? Who can issue that stop order? Who is on this call right now? Hey, let me let me chime in. This state representative Carter. Here's here's the danger in the in this type of meeting. So let me say this first. 
the city council needs to call a special call meeting to address this issue. They, they're going through their investigation. The challenge, I think, what the attorney is trying to say, and I'm, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking about some of the stuff that has happened. They put a stop order on, they stopped the stop order. The mayor did that. In order for the city to stay in the bounds of the law, these council members cannot make a decision on this call. We could share with them our concerns. They need to be in a legal meeting to make the call. Right. I'm, I'm so much in agreement with everything that you're saying, but I think their hands are tied a little bit by saying they're going to do this today. But I will say, I hope that whatever avenue that they need to do to have a special call meeting, that they do that like now. Whoever they need to communicate with, whatever your process is to do a special call meeting, I think we're okay, uh, Councilman Turner, if you say we're going to call a meeting to address this issue. Uh, and I don't know if y'all's is 24 hours. I mean, it is, yeah, it has to be at least 24 hours. I think if you, yeah, I think I if off, you do that. After I get off this call, I'm going to send the information to our. Yes, yes. And I think that uh, way, and then you communicate back to us. That way people know that you're listening. They yes, know about two, three more weeks down the road, you take an action now. Exactly. Councilman. We needed need information from you. Yes, Ms. Lee. Ms. Lee. Okay. Uh, this is to Attorney Denmark. You said that your investigation would be completed by tomorrow. Those are your words. Is that correct? Ma'am. And then you said you would present it to the councilman at the next meeting, which is the 10th of August. Is that correct? No, I said I was going to give it to the full committee I mean, I'm giving it to the investigative committee tomorrow, and then I will present it to the full mayor and council at the next opportunity. If in the interim, anybody wants to have a special call meeting based on my investigative report being issued, uh, that's fine. So, I mean, it, it'll be available to the, to the committee uh, tomorrow. The investigative committee, the, committee. Committee. the, the investigative yes. committee, right? Yes. yes. So they know as much as you know, because you all investigated together, is that correct? Well, I mean, I, I'm looking at the legal aspects of it based, I mean, I'm the city attorney, so I'm looking at it from the legal aspects of it. And so when they see it tomorrow, that'll be the first time they've seen my legal conclusions. Okay, well, my, my question is, why do we, the community, the one that is uh, directly impacting, why do we have to wait until next week or whatever uh, uh, to give us the information? We need information immediately. We need to know now. Why should we sit on pins and needles waiting for you to tell this person and this person? The stop order was lifted on the 14th of July. This is the 30th of July. We need you guys to take this seriously. Man, this I, I think it's it seriously, man. There was a stop order already? Was yeah, there stop the stop work order was lifted by the mayor July 14th. Why? Ms. Lee, we just stated that we're going to have a special call meeting concerning this as soon as possible. So we are moving in that direction. We can't do it on a public forum like this because it's not legal for us as council members. We're going to do it the way we're supposed to do it. And we'll get back with you. I'll get back with you immediately with the information that you need to know or you want to know. Councilman. Yes. Question for Mr. Denmark. Could yes. Chris Wheeler write up a stop work order tonight put it on the mayor's desk, and could the mayor sign it tomorrow morning? Could he physically do it? Absolutely, yeah. He How could. could he legally do it? Yeah, yeah, he could. So that's all that needs to happen. That's the minimum to get it stopped. Chris drafts it, mayor signs it. Yes. And if that happened, would that give you a little more time for your investigation and time for other slower processes? I, I, don't, I don't need any time for my investigation because by the time Chris does that and the mayor signs it, my investigation will be complete. It'll be done tomorrow. And at that point, um, the council can decide if they want to have a special call meeting and what, if any, action they want to take. Okay, so that, that's, that's separate. You can stop work order. could be signed at 9.01 tomorrow or whatever time the mayor gets in. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, but uh, I think you guys should also re realize this. And, you know, and everybody is moving along, not just on emotion. So don't don't 
write that down as Clinton said, it was all emotion. It's not all emotion. It's real life. It's real situation. But the other thing is you got to remember that the stop work order was lifted for a reason. And it wasn't lift, lifted for a personal reason. It was discussed with counsel in a special set, sex, uh, session with the city council. Gonzalez. And, and yeah, as well, yeah, as well, I'm sorry, as yeah, well, yeah, uh, that was a decision made that we should, that we should uh, lift that uh, uh, stop work order. There was a reason for that. So what we don't want to do is just forge ahead with our head bent and just moving ahead and not gaining anything. We really want to make this last. We want to make this actually something that's going to stop and that's going to stop forever, not something that's going to keep coming back up. And, and, you know, and I would hope that our citizens will understand that's the whole point, part of the point that we have an investigative committee in the first place. Everybody on this phone call, as far as I can tell, is on the same train moving in the same direction. We just got to be smart about what we do. We just can't just get mad and start throwing punches. We got to really figure out a way to make this go away permanently, not just for today or tomorrow and not just to say that you know you had a role in, in in whatever but what we do need to do is do this the right way so that it will stay in place forever yeah councilman uh, thank you for your comments i believe if you can please go back to what mr marcus said nothing will stop you from moving forward we want a stop order by 8 a.m today they were already on the field. The stop work order will not stop you from doing anything. It will not create any confusion. All you need is let them stop and it gives you time to finish up. It appears that there is something under the tongue we are not uh, seeing. So let the council people meet and address it. Nobody can take 250,000 and throw it through the window. Right. It shouldn't happen. Let us stop going for left and right. All we said, stop work and have time to finish up and do it within 14 days. It can be done if it is your property. Thank you. Right. And why right. was the stop work order lifted? So I have a question or a My comment, I should say. Let, let me answer his question, why the stop work order was lifted per Mr. Mayor's letter, Mayor Larry. He wrote a letter stating that uh, to um, not to get a lawsuit, in order not to get a lawsuit, okay, in order not to be sued, he's lifting the work order. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Turner? Yes, it was, it was for legal reasons. It was for legal reasons, but there was no consideration for this subdivision when he wrote that letter and when he uh, lifted that work order. No consideration at all. It was strictly because he didn't want to be absolutely, there, by Metro Green. That was, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. That was, that was consideration for the community, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and that's why, I ain't that's part of the reason why the mayor lifted the work order. Because we, we, we backing up and trying to figure a way to get this done the right way so that this community won't be in the same bind a year from now. You don't want us to be in court fighting over this a year from now while they continue to build over there and, uh, and, and do whatever it is they want to do. So we want to make certain that we do the right thing, fix this problem now, and the community can rejoice after the fight. Y'all can still, I mean, we can, I mean, whatever no. you want to do with the mayor, about the mayor, that's fine. But as far as the community no. is concerned. No. Councilman Clinton, that's they our are building. One concern. So we just, um, just Councilman Clinton, they are building right now. It, it, they have. They are. They we are we know that, and that's building. what. That's exactly right. They are building right now. But and, you know, just, and what I'm hearing is they're asking that they stop building now, and sort this out, instead of allowing them to continue to build while you sort this out. Because while. But think. But think about it, sir. If whether they stop now or if they stop in two weeks, if we win, we win. In two weeks, they're gonna have more. Well, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, and so. It, we win, we win, whether it's now or two weeks from now. Trust me, nobody's trying to lose this. I, I, I really admire what uh, uh, Winston Denmark said when he don't go to court to lose. He don't. He go to court to win. We're in this fight to win it. We're not in this fight to appease anybody. I mean, I think everybody in the city has made their position plain and, and, and are standing firm with their decision to make certain this does not happen. Now, 
there's a lot of th things on the other side of that equation. It what is, is what it's going to cost it's us? I know it's, it is it happening looks. right now. That's what it, that's what they're trying to tell you, and uh, it seems like you aren't hearing that. It is not stopped. On their end, their process is still going on. And in the interim, it's it's continuing to conflict, uh, uh, inflict environmental stress on these people. So Mr. that hadn't stopped. Stop that while you're stopping the program. And, and if I can add a comment to the, to the council person, if, may I go ahead, Mr. Turner? Yeah, yes, please. Thank you. If if I can add a comment, if if we remember when the original stop work order was issued, I believe around July the 1st, it was said so that an investigation could proceed. And it was told that that would stay, the stop work order would stay in place until the investigation was completed. However, as attorney Denmark has said, he hasn't even submitted his findings and will not do so until tomorrow. Um, I understand that Metro Green threatened, or I don't want to use that term, Metro Green said that they would uh, sue the city of Stonecrest but was, did they ever produce any legal documentation? I don't believe the stop work order should have been lifted if there was, if there was no legal filings from Metro Green. So why did we lift the stop work order? So we had a meeting, uh, executive session, and, and in executive session, we're not allowed to discuss everything that we discuss. But uh, there, there was quite a, I mean, it's not just a threatening letter uh, is the reason why we would just stop. You know, there is consideration. We had our attorney there, we had members of our staff there, and every single city council member was there. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a full-blown discussion. Trust me, we're not just, you know, nobody, I'm not afraid of Metro Green. I don't know about any other council members, so whatever they say, I care less about it. The only thing I care about is exactly what you guys care about, is environmental, what you all call it, racism, but I'm not calling it that, but I will call it this, it's certainly not an environmental friendly facility. So, you know, that is not something that we want in the city, no matter how it occurred. So now our job, our only job that we're left to, to do is to figure out a way to fix this. Our job is not to go back in the time and to change time to make things different than it, what it, how it started off. Our job now is to fix it. And that's what we're trying to do. We just gonna, we just asking you guys for a just, I mean, what's a weekend? <laughs> I mean, we asking for a minute to make sure we do this right. Why would we go back and make the same mistake again by uh, by putting out a stop work order that didn't work the first time? So why would we do that when we could fix this permanently? Let's wait for the, uh, until tomorrow, we can't do nothing tonight anyway. Let's wait for uh, 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 Attorney Denmark's report to the council. Council, the, the council, the council Clayton, that, Councilman Clayton, I tomorrow. wouldn't. I would encourage the entire city council and the mayor to come out to the property. Those of us yeah. who live oh, across I've the been street. There. I've and, been there. No, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. Come every day because they are moving expeditiously. Trust exactly. those and look at the oh, look at exactly. the chat messages I know. and listen to us. I mean at breakneck speed. Daily, it's part of, we yeah, can it's see part of what that, they're doing. It, and it's part of their plan. It, 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 see, that's a scare tactic <laughs> that we're not going to settle for. It's like, well, look at what, look, look at all the work we're putting in. You're, you're all, you know, you can, you can't, you can't, you should let us go. No, no, we don't care about the work you're putting in. So you put in more work, it's just costing you money. Councilman, uh, Clinton, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with your assessment on, on you all, you all not being scared. Because the reality is, from what you just said, you all stopped because they were threatening legal um, legal action against you all. You actually, you don't know why we stopped now. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that trust us that we're, we're we have a stop. And you know, I, I understand that you guys right, are looking at it from a different angle that we're looking let, at. It from. Let me just say this. Let, let me just say this because you only have a few more minutes. Let, let the walk away be, as I said earlier, we're going to call a special call meeting as soon as possible to discuss these issues and to stop work on it. That's what we're going to do. All right, because we can keep going back and forth with this because that's the direction we want to move into. I will get with our city uh, a clerk tonight, send that information out see as soon as possible. We'll also have at that time the results from the investigative team. So we'll have all that information in place, direction in place, have everything set, hopefully, and we can move forward as fast as they're moving. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're okay. going to do. Okay. Mr. Turner, I would just like to say um, in response to um, Councilman Clinton, if you look hard and long, 
there are tremendous amounts of studies on environmental racism. If you have a brain in your head, why in the world would you put a recycling center around an area where you have hundreds and hundreds of families? A recycling center is dangerous. It stinks already because we walked through there. It is environmental racism and many white people have no regard for us as a people. Come on, serious. It's garbage and I'll keep saying it. We have fought cell towers. They put them in our area in disproportionate numbers. I don't know when our officials are going to get it. Because when somebody comes to you with something that makes no sense, somebody needs to stand up and say, let's talk with the community. I understand they own land, but we have lives to live. So I please. I agree with you. And we are well, you see, I really, don't, I really don't have a problem with them, uh, with them uh, building a, a recycling plant in the Cab County as well as Stone because there's plenty of uh, places to do it, but in a residential area, it's right. not the place. Right. Uh, but so, the one, the one oh, problem that oh, I am I having is, speak up. Uh, oh, okay. my biggest problem is that they are still building. Right. They're moving faster <laughs> than us. We're gonna try to, Mr. Hanna, we're gonna try to move just as fast as possible. Right. Okay, I'm that's sorry. what we're gonna do. Hey, question, one, one more question for Mr. Denmark. Apparently, Metro Green knew very clearly they'd received communications from DeKalb County that they were not going to be in compliance with the waste management plan. They kind of ignored that. They made their applications anyway. They didn't reveal it to EPD or anybody else. That is totally fraudulent behavior. It's a fraudulent application. Isn't that grounds for just stopping it and forcing them to reapply? It certainly could be. It, it, they they kind of sought for an opinion that they comply with the solid waste management plan when the cab county wouldn't give it then they asked the city of stonecrest to do so and stonecrest the city of stonecrest did in fact uh issue uh, that letter and that letter was used by epd to make the decision that EPD yes but the but metro green hid the other letters so they they did not make it the knowledge that there was even uncertainty part of any of the discussions they just as you said they shopped for a better opinion, and then they forgot everything that they were told. That's that's got to be fraud of some sort, or an illegal application, or something like that. <laughs> Is that something like that? You're right. You're right. Yeah, something like that, Councilman. Okay, we're gonna. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> say the problem, we're gonna have to end the call. But yes, sir, Mister. Is it Mulberry? You have one other point you want to make, real quick. You you muted, sir. Sir, you muted. You muted. We can't hear you. Can I make, can I say something, please? Yes, ma'am, real quick. Um, What if uh, the mayor does not sign I'm uh, the, the work, the request to stop the work, to stop the work? Who has the power to actually do the, the stop work order? If Larry refuses, what happens then? Well, the, the council, the council has the power. We have four votes. So All I right. believe that the council has the power to do so. Okay. That's who, what I wanted to know. Thank who asked you. that question? I'm sorry. Ms. Oh, this is, this is Piper. Okay. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Well, well, like Thank we you. said, Mr. Denmark will have the report on tomorrow. We'll hopefully have our call meeting, hopefully no later than Monday. I'm going to try to get it as soon as Monday. And then you'll have some information and you'll be on that call meeting. And then we'll go forth and see what kind of direction we can move in for the stop order. And also how we're going to approach uh, Metro Green in reference to co the complete stop and not just a temporary stop order, but a complete one. But I want to thank everybody for your comments, your, your concerns, your passion, because this is what it's all about. This is what it's going to take. The five of us, the council people can't do it by ourselves. I want to appreciate, I appreciate Mr. Wheeler and uh, uh, Attorney Denmark for their support. And of course, um, the council people, everybody is here to work together to make this happen, to protect you and to provide for you. And that's what we're going to do. So thank you so much for this evening. Um, if you have any other questions and concerns, you have my phone number at 470-850-8888. Call me anytime. You have my email. I'll be more than happy to talk with you, meet with you, whatever you need. But uh, you're right. Time is of the essence, and we're going to move uh, very quickly on that. Thank you, Senator. Is you want to say anything before we leave, Senator Jones?
Uh, thank you, Councilman. And uh, just respond to the question that was asked regarding EPD and their awareness of the issue from uh, stock work ordered the uh, solid waste plants from DeKalb County. The state was aware that DeKalb County did not agree with the solid waste plan. And I do not know the gentle person who answered, who asked the question, but the state was aware of that. And the state overlooked it because they received a letter from Stonecrest. And the state, in my conversations with them at EPD, have said, yes, we were aware of it, that DeKalb County did not, did not agree with this solid waste management plan. However, we got this letter from Stonecrest, and we based our decision to issue the permit based on the letter from Stonecrest. So that's my whole bone of contention with uh, EPD. Mm -hmm. Is that knew it was not that the Cab County was not aware of it, and you should not have issued that EPD based on uh, mm -hmm. that permit based on a letter from Stonecrest because you knew for a fact that they were not in compliance, and that's what we're dealing with at the state level now. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all your help. It's you too, Representative Carter. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be getting back to you real soon. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions and uh, being a part of this. Have You're a welcome. safe evening and. Uh, Continue to mask up. We'll be talking Good soon. Good night. Thank y'all. Thank you. Appreciate okay. you.